What would you do if you knew for a fact the world was going to explode in exactly 15 minutes? Would you devote your time and energy into building a rocket to escape? Would you get all your friends of varying ideologies together to help you? What if you knew that unless you all worked perfectly together, only some of you would actually get to get on that rocket? Breaking Games seeks to answer that question for you, but in the most ridiculous way possible with We're Doomed from designer Mike Horton. I'm incredibly excited to share this one with everyone, so let's jump right in. Inside the box, there's not much, which may leave you wondering why the box is so big. I'll get to that in a bit. First up, we have our rule book. Short and sweet, and it even has a section on etiquette. How proper. Next up is the game's event deck. The box specifically says, do not shuffle in large, bold font. This is important, and the box itself keeps the cards from accidentally getting prematurely reordered. Token bags in both black and white for prestige and resources, respectively. And there's also player cards, stands, and a first player token. I'm saving the big reveal for last. In the box side compartment, there's a timepiece de resistance, a 15 minute deluxe angry orange sand timer. All these pieces are critically important to screwing over your friends, so let's see exactly how that works, shall we? The first thing I'm going to want to tell you about We're Doomed is that the minimum player count is just wrong. The box tells you that 4 to 10 players can participate here, but 4 doesn't provide a great experience. Not only will you be missing a roll, but since voting is such a huge part of the game, and you're going to be voting between two players most often, you're going to want at least 5 gamers. That being said, here's the setup for 5, and let me walk you through a full round. With five players, each of the game's factions are present, and that's important because each one of them gets a better version of one of the game's five actions. Starting each round is the first player, and they'll choose one of the five things to do. Produce, which allows you to gain two resources. Technocracies actually take this action and gain three when they do it. Indoctrinate, gaining one influence, but a theocracy gains two. Propagandize, which lets you spend a single resource to steal an influence from another player, unless you're a corporatocracy, in which case you own the propaganda machine, so you don't have to pay for it. The fourth option is to invade, which gets you two resources from another player at the cost of a single influence. Democracies, though, they're super popular and can invade without spending that influence. Finally, we come to the ultimate option, nuking another player out of the game for the hefty cost of eight resources. But hold on, autocracies are used to their leaders doing whatever they want, so they get away with only spending five. Once everyone's chosen one of the five options, then begins the contribution phase. And here is where things get legit crazy. There's no turn order anymore. Anyone, at any time, and at whatever speed they want, can start chucking resources into the box. They can even contribute multiple times. The game asks that you keep a running, honest total of your contributions every time you do, though. So if this technocracy throws in one, then our democratic friend throws in two, the technocracy can then throw in two more and announce three, their total contribution for the round. There's also no time limit on this phase, so just when you think everyone's done, Whoever contributed the most gets the first player token, a single prestige, and gets to look at the top event card. Some of these should be read out loud and then carried out, and some of them are kept by the player who looks at it as a secret power or ability they can use later on in the game. Real talk, these event cards are straight fire. In our games, they've done some ridiculous nonsense that I don't want to spoil for you all, but rest assured, they are absolute perfection. Remember, you're racing against the clock here, so some of these events are purposefully laden with words, forcing you to read them out loud and waste time. Some of them have tasks for you to perform before you can move on, which again, chew up your most precious resource. After the event card resolves, you start a new round with a new first player. Anytime there's a tie in We're Doomed, it's broken by a majority vote. And if the vote is tied, you do it again, and again, and again, until there's a winner. Everything in this game is geared towards this tiny piece of plastic right here. At the end of 15 minutes, gameplay hard stops, and you count up how many resources are in the box. Based on that number, you determine how many seats are in the rocket, and then those seats are assigned to players based, usually, on the amount of prestige everyone has, and whether or not they're even still alive. Remember how I told you earlier that I explained why the box was so deep? It's so you don't have a good idea how many resources are in it at a glance. It takes 40 of these little tokens just to get a single seat on the rocket, and additional seats go up by 10 apiece, so it's very hard to tell where you stand until the end. 
I've already buried the lead a little bit here, and you can probably tell by how excited I am about this game that I absolutely love it. I don't know how long it's going to hold up for me, but there's a ton of event cards, and with my playgroup, it's going to be a long time before we get tired of holding each other hostage for the silliest things. I'll say this right now, if you ever, and I literally mean ever, have a game night where you get five or more people together, you owe it to yourself to get this game and play it. I am 100% serious when I say it's the most I've laughed playing a game maybe in forever, and I'm including the time when I was young and naive and played Cards Against Humanity. Where does this game fall down? You know your crew better than I do. Players who have little tolerance for silliness are probably going to roll their eyes more than join in the fray, which is a bummer. One buzzkill can easily ruin this game for the group, as can an alpha gamer trying to keep track of how many resources there are in the box as you play. Trust me, just give in to the game and it will reward you. Having played this a few times, I can tell with certainty that I'm going to want an expansion with more event cards pretty soon. but. There's enough here, and with the rule that you don't shuffle the event deck before gameplay, you're going to work your way through the whole deck before you see repeat cards. Another testament to strong game testing. We're Doomed provided us with a literal nearly non-stop 15 minutes of laughter while we all tried to cheat each other out of survival. If you're still not sold on it, you might just hate fun. Let's go through our checklist. In the box, rulebook clear and non-gender pronouns. The rulebook is clear, short, explains all the edge cases your rules lawyer is going to want to know, and does so without using gendered pronouns. High five. Iconography clear. With only resources and prestige to pay attention to, you won't have any issue knowing what the game is asking of you. Packaging well done. The box does an admirable job of protecting what's inside, especially the perfect sand timer. Considering you play inside the box as well, it needs to hold up to a little abuse, and it will. On the table, good representation. Two of the game's five roles are represented on the player cards by female presenting art. Not bad. Component quality, decent to good. The cloth bags are nicely made, the cards are of a decent thickness, the box is very sturdy, and the tokens are just fine cardboard chits. The sand timer is great and should outlast the rest of the game. Replay value, decent. Your ability to replay this game is going to fully depend on the group of people you get to play it. Players who take it a little too seriously will inevitably find a way to break the game of it, but if you treat it like a light filler game, you're going to find that it provides a ton of value for the price. Fun to lose. Oh god yes. Due to the sheer amount of resources necessary to even get one seat on the rocket, let alone enough for everyone to make it out alive, you're never sure just how many players are going to survive. The fact that there's player elimination is offset perfectly by the 15 minute playtime, and you're going to want to play this one more than once a session for sure. I'm going to cut myself off here before I play the fool falling all over myself. This is a hard GLHF recommendation, folks. Buy it. Buy it now. I'm Nicholas, reminding you to help protect the game population. Always leave your cards. <laughs>